Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Raven Omo. Hi if you're new here or hey if you've been here before. Today we are going to be talking about my five best slash favorite audiobooks that I have listened to in the year 2020. I did this video last year as well and this is just kind of a way to talk about books that I enjoyed especially in the audiobook format even though they might not have made my top favorite books of the year though one or two might have crossed over and you know we'll, we'll talk about them as we get there but yeah there's definitely some books that I just really loved the audiobook experience for and I feel like it's a good way to share some of these thoughts with you guys especially if you are looking for a good audiobooks either a single or a series to get into and you're not really sure where to start so with that preamble out of the way let's just jump into my five favorite audiobooks of 2020. So for 2020, I actually started to do a lot of rereads via audiobook. And I will talk about, we'll start there with the two series that I reread slash continued on audio this year. The first one that I'm going to talk about is the Hunger Games series. So I listened to all three of the Hunger Games, but I started listening to them in 2019 at the end of the year and I finished them in 2020, but I am going to lump this all in because all three audiobooks were narrated by the same person, and that was Tatiana Maslani. She was magnificent reading those books. I just felt her vibe and her voice fit Katniss's character so, so well. Some to the degree that I, and I like Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss, but I felt like Tatiana's voice just fit Katniss so much better even. And I don't know, she just really helped paint the the whole image. And she, during like some of the books, like the scenes where they're singing some of the songs, she sang. And at the end of the first book where she narrated, there was a little interview and she kind of talked about how she really loved the chance to be able to narrate these books and sing even though she really didn't think her voice was great and I kind of liked that because I thought it just fit Katniss's character so well that even though she didn't think she was a good singer and maybe she's not it worked very very well for this book series and it brought Katniss a little bit more personality also just rereading the series and in this format I mean overall I really forgot how much I absolutely adored The Hunger Games. It is still one of my favorite books of all times, one of my favorite series of all times. And because I finished the series this year and I actually listened to Mockingjay, the, one of the first books I finished in 2020, I finished it in January. And um, I just have a whole new appreciation for that book in particular. When I was a teenager and I was reading the series, I really was hung up on... Mockingjay. I didn't like it. I, I didn't think it fit. I thought it was weird. I thought it ended poorly. Um, and that changed as an adult uh, after so many years of not reading the series and then rereading it for the first time and really appreciating what that book did for the series and how war is messy and people are traumatized and they're not gonna just get over things like war and and death and all of these issues. Mockingjay really, really hit the nail on the head. So this whole experience <laughs> listening to the audiobooks was just something wonderful. And I highly praise the narrator because she did a wonderful job bringing these books to life, especially because there is a movie now. And I'm sure people would just opt to go see the movie in instead because it's fresher and you can kind of picture things. But I just thought she did such a good job of bringing something that already has a digital format to it and bringing it to life again for me. So overall, I, I definitely recommend listening to The Hunger Games if you haven't read it in a while or you haven't read it ever. If you want to pick it up, it's a very easy audiobook to get into and it will suck you in. The next series that I'm going to talk about, I listened to both of the audiobooks this past year, and that would be the Stormheart series by Cora Carmack. The first book being Roar, the second being Rage. This series follows a young princess who is born into a family who is supposed to have a lot of magic tied to the land, 
but she actually has none. So her family is trying to broker a deal with a neighboring kingdom to get her married into a very powerful family in order to kind of secure her place on the throne and be able to keep ruling her kingdom. However, she doesn't really trust the princes that come into her home and instead she tries to take off to find magic in order to better protect her own kingdom and to take over her kingdom without needing a man. And while she is out doing that, she runs into a bunch of storm hunters who find the way to be able to tame natural storms in order to get their storm hearts, which is where the magic is contained, and they are able to wield magic without actually being a magic user. It is a very fun story. It has a very well done romance, and it is a wonderfully written story in my opinion. I love the balance of adventure and romance and the magic system and the kingdoms. I was obsessed with it. I read Roar a couple years ago and the author who is Cora Carmack does have some medical issues so the book series are I think it's a coming out every two years instead of every year even though it was planned to be every year. So I believe the first book came out in 2017 and then Rage came out in 2019 and I kept putting it off because I forgot a little bit of what happened in the first one. So this year I decided that I was going to reread Roar and continue with Rage because in 2021 the final book Rain is supposed to come out. And overall I really enjoyed reading the books physically at least for the first one and I really enjoyed rereading the first book and continuing with the second one. I I just love this series and the plus side is that the narrator is one of my favorite narrators of, of all time and you're going to see her again on this list and that is Sonali Nankani. She is just so good. I I'm just obsessed with how she does narration. I don't know why but like she has the perfect voice. It is soothing. It's not overdone. She is able to change pitch but it never sounds bad because I do think sometimes there's female narrators that they're not able to get their voice deep enough so when they do impersonations of male characters it just kind of sounds a little weird sometimes and it does it just kind of takes me out of the story but she does them very well and I I she's just one of my favorite narrators of all time so not only did I get to cherish a series that I already liked and continue with it but I got to do it with a narrator that I already adore. Overall I think this series is so much fun and it's even though it is like a high fantasy because it's in a different world with its own magic system I think it's very easy to follow along to and this was another series that I where I was really able to just dive in get really acquainted quickly and enjoy what was being laid out. So I feel like if you want a quick series, I believe there are, I mean, it, it's not quite quick. It's like 12 to 14 hours for the two books each are. And that is a bit of a chunk of time, but it's so well done that I think you would be able to fly through it and it won't feel that long. For the next best audiobook that I've listened to, it's also a series because I read the first two books this year, and that would be the City of Brass series by S.A. Chakraborty. I read slash listened to both City of Brass and the sequel Kingdom of Copper. The third book, The Empire of Gold, did come out this year. I just didn't get to listen to it before that book came out. So that is on my list to read in 2021. But for now, we just have the first two. And again, this series is narrated by Sonali Nankani. I think she's great. And apparently I gravitate towards the books where she narrates. This series is about a woman in Cairo, and I think it's like the 19th, early 19th century maybe, and she is kind of a swindler who has a knack for healing. She wants to be a doctor, but she's looked down upon. She doesn't have any money. She essentially thieves to, to stay alive, and eventually she kind of steals something that ends up having a gin attached to it, and the gin ends up taking her to this hidden city of magic essentially. That's a really quick and uh, quick and dirty way of describing this book but it is so well done. The magic system is interesting. I love the different lore because we're so used to I think European magic systems and this it just gives you a different vibe and a different lore than we are used to and it's done so well. I think the political system is also done really well and I also like how the whole system is set up where like you want to root for some people but everyone is kind of gray. You can understand where people are coming from even though you might not agree for it and then there might be things that are like 
you would root for and they're doing the opposite so it's just really well done i really like the perspectives were given and i like how everything was coming together my only gripe that i will say listening to this series was that after listening to book one i didn't jump immediately into book two i gave it like a couple months i think in between and when i finally got to start listening to book two I did not realize for the longest time that book two takes place five years after book one. So that was a big shift for me. And I was trying to like scatter my brain and trying to figure out where we were coming from because I'm like, oh my God, didn't this just happen? Like, where has everything been going? Why are they there? What is happening? And then a little bit into the book, it finally repeated the fact that it was five years later. And I don't know if it was just me. I missed that listening in the beginning or if the audiobook didn't actually clarify that it was five years because you know sometimes when you're reading books and it'll be like five years later because there is a prologue and I don't know if I missed it somewhere from the prologue to chapter one I'm not sure but that threw me off so that's the only thing that might be it could be the same for someone is that book one is in one time and then book two is five years later and that might make it a little confusing if you're listening to it but Overall, I highly recommend the series, whether you're physically reading it or listening to an audiobook. I think it's well worth either way, but if you choose audiobook, just know that the narrator is one of my favorite narrators of all time, and you are in good hands. The next book on this list is a standalone, and it's actually a contemporary, and that is Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn, and this is narrated by Aiden Rell Ojo. I could have butchered that and I'm sorry, but I will try to like put it here just in case. So I just wanted to give this book a shout out because this book is about asexuality and as someone who identifies as that, I really wanted to kind of give a chance to find some books that are representative of that because I don't feel like there's many, but this book is all about the main character being asexual and biromantic and that is pretty much the plot of this where she is trying to figure out who she is and how she wants to find love with people who understand what she identifies as and what that means for her in a relationship because just because she identifies as asexual and isn't interested in sexual and activity with people doesn't mean that she doesn't want to love someone. I enjoyed this book. While it wasn't one of my favorites of the year, I absolutely like what the book was trying to do, the representation it was trying to give to the world. And I also understand that I think it might be a, an own voices. I'm not 100% sure, but I understand that the approach, how everyone experiences something is going to be different. So even though some things really resonated with me, other things just like didn't hit the mark at all, but I still enjoyed it. The part where I did want to just kind of give this praise is that the audiobook is really well done and it's a pretty fast paced audiobook. So if you, I think it's under 10 hours and obviously if you listen to a higher speed, you would get done with this book pretty quickly and it is so easy to follow the story. Um, contemporaries for me at least are usually much easier to follow along with. I think the narrators don't have to paint as vivid of a picture usually because the contemporaries are set in our world. So you don't have to really try to understand what's happening because it's in our world. You can pretty much picture it. So we definitely think, especially if you're looking for the asexual representation or just more LGBT plus representation, this is such a great book to pick up on audio and just can enjoy what the story brings. I will also say that this is also more of a new adult book. It is labeled as young adult, but it is, she's in college and I think she's like 19 or 20. So she's a little bit older and it's kind of nice to see a book that doesn't have, even though technically like sex is the main idea, it's actually the lack of sex. It, it's, and I feel like new adult always gets that rep for like, oh, it's kind of like all this like smutty romance. This book really isn't like that. And I think it's kind of a breath of fresh air to get a new adult that's not painted in that picture. And I only say that, I'm not saying that every new adult is, I only say that because as someone who doesn't read a lot of new adult, I hear that quite often, that new adult is just like smutty college books. I don't agree necessarily, but I don't read that many, so I'm not sure. So if you are also in that vein where you feel like that's your impression of new adult, then pick this one up for a breath of fresh air. And last on this list is another series, but I'm pretty sure all the books that I've listened to in this series so far, because it's a longer one, 
has been by the same narrator, but that series is the Sookie Stackhouse Southern Vampire series. The True Blood show was based off of these books, and the first one is Dead Until Dark, there by Charlene Harris, and it is a fun time. <laughs> so as someone who absolutely adores the HBO show True Blood, despite its flaws and despite how campy it is, the book is also very campy in some ways, and I give it credit because I feel like a lot of people say that the True Blood show like kind of takes a huge turn and departure from the books but I've read up and I think I've read five of them so far and listened to the Mount audiobook and they're much truer than I was expecting and maybe as I keep going down the line they will depart but so far the people who told me that they like depart quickly I don't believe you anymore because there's a lot of things that line up and I only say this because I very recently rewatched all of True Blood with my partner and I, being refreshed from it I was like oh yeah this this a lot of a lot of this stuff happens some things that I didn't like in the book I'm glad they left out of the series and some of the things that I loved about the series I'm disappointed that they didn't have more of in the book such as some of the characters but I understand that the show follows more characters and the book series is only from Sookie's point of view so it's definitely going to make it different but that's a video for another day we're not going to compare the movie and the show however I do want to just talk about the audiobook because I think the audiobook is wonderfully done it is recorded by recorded books and the narrator is Joanna Parker she does a phenomenal job and now we know that Sookie Stackhouse is southern they're in Bone Temps, Louisiana in the show same in the book and the narrator does such a good job of the southern drawl and the differences and the nuances in each character when they're interacting and I love it like it's not overwhelming because I do feel like sometimes people and like voice actors and whatever they can like really emphasize the southern accent and that could be like hard to handle maybe it's just me but I just think sometimes it's overdone I think she does such a perfect job and the the narration I I it it is sucky I I just picture even though like I do picture Anna Paquin as Sookie when I'm listening like the the voice just fits her so well it fits the vibe it fits how Sookie is and a lot of things just make sense when you're listening to the audiobook so I think it's very well done I really enjoy listening to them and this is a series that I do want to finish this year because I have enjoyed listening to the audiobooks I've dragged my feet so long listening slash reading the series because there's so many books but I realize that they are really mostly quick reads. All of them are pretty much under 10 hours and I usually listen between 1.5 and 2 speed so because I listen to that high I typically get done with them even quicker and I just really enjoy them. So if you are like me and you have been putting off the Sookie Stackhouse series because of how many books they are I highly recommend just giving the audiobook a listen. I do know they are on Audible, and obviously you can do one credit a month to get the audiobook, but if you have a Scribd membership, they're all also on Scribd, and Scribd you can listen to. It does cut you off depending on how many books you read or listen to in a month, but I could get to like two or three of the audiobooks in a month if I wanted to, and you know that's that's an other option and different service that you could do script I believe is like eight bucks a month so it's it's pretty attainable and you can listen to more than one but again there is a limit for like popular books and new releases you can only listen to so many of them in a month and then it'll like take those out of your library until the month renews so be aware of that I did kind of hit that mark sometimes when listening to script because I would listen to like the popular books and new releases and then it would cut me off so keep that in mind but that is the end of this list like I said these were in no particular order and they really just I wanted to kind of share some spotlight on these books that were really well done in the audio format I personally love audiobooks and I know for a fact that some audiobook narrations just kill the story for you I can probably make an entire video on the the audiobooks that have turned me off of a series before so yeah we'll leave it at that but for this video I hope you enjoyed this these were my favorite audiobooks that I listened to in the year 2020 and I'm looking forward to more audiobook listens in 2021. 
Let me know down below if you also have any favorites uh, for audiobooks of 2020, or let me know if you have any audiobooks that you anticipate listening to in 2021. And until next time, I will see you then. Bye.